Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. So the topic of this week, uh, my dear sister Hilde asked me if I would talk about shame. So guilt and shame, we can talk about that today. Naturally, we're going through different experiences in life, and there are different times that we're going to be doing things that or an action or a certain situation you do something uh you may find it uncharacteristic it's not who you are or who you believe that you are or not and that's the result of that you're going to be shameful and uh Your mind's going to come and or people going to shame you or give you a feeling of guilt. And that's a very normal and natural thing. That's going to happen basically for every human being. Unless you're completely a narcissist and very self-absorbed in always feeling righteous, you may not be experiencing it, but pretty much every normal human being on this planet is going to be experiencing a level of shame and guilt for something that has happened or you've done. And um, I would say that I would take it as a sign of, as a good sign. You know, I won't look at it as a bad sign necessarily because it represents the fact that you're human. Uh, it also represents the fact that you have your flaws. And on top of it, it still represents that you're identifying with the body-mind mechanism. You're identifying with the doer you think you're someone who's doing things. And that's a part of this awakening to the point that you're digging in and you're digging in and you're going deeper within yourself until you come to this realization that there is really no doer. But that is the final understanding. It takes time for a lot of us to get to that point. So to get to that point, you have to go through a lot of different layers. And th there's a lot of ups and downs to it. There's a lot of self-doubt, self-shame, self. Um, that's why they call it self-realization to realize the self, to realize the part of yourself which is eternal, the part of yourself which is untainted, the part of yourself which is clean. It's never been um, stained. So, and this part of you is simply the awareness. It's the one who's hearing what I'm saying right now. It's the one which is aware. There's this awareness. Something is aware. Something's awake. Something here is watching. Something comes and says that I feel ashamed of my thoughts or desires or the kind of kooky stuff I do in my private when I'm privately alone, I do some things or whatever I do. And then I feel shameful of it for my judgments or my acts or the kind of things have happened. So this is a part that gets tricky because
the more awake you become, the more you're waking up to the self, the more like the shadows and the dark parts of yourself are becoming visible. You're starting to tune in and, and uh, noticing things. So, and if you are sincere and uh, if you are able to go beyond your ego, you're really working on yourself, you're really paying attention you go through this phase that you're blaming other people. So you're, and this is a trap a lot of spiritual seekers fall into it, that you're too aware, you're too awake, you're too holy, you're too good. You've become vegetarian, you don't drink, you don't smoke, uh, you have very little sexual thoughts, you meditate a lot, um you do yoga you do all the right things and then your ego comes and you think you're better than others and now you start to point finger at them how sleepy how unconscious they are so it, this is a phase we we'll all go through that or majority of spiritual seekers i would say 99% or more go through that phase that you're righteous you're better and the rest of the world is sleepy and hopefully if you go beyond that stage you pass that then you are looking at yourself you're watching yourself you're not really putting your finger on other people uh, and you're paying attention to where you're at with yourself. So then also, depending on your background, where you come from, like what kind of childhood you had, how much they shamed you or how much they made you feel guilty, whether it's most of the time it's with your sexuality, uh, the times with your sex of what you are, whether you're a girl, uh, and especially from the old days, uh, girls being shamed uh, or they're being expected to act like a lady or whatever. And they shouldn't be doing this, shouldn't be doing that, saying this, saying that. So they're being put down. Uh, today, things have changed a lot. But back in the day, that's how it was. And so you were always, you already had a little bit of a second class citizen status because you were a woman and uh, so you were one step down already so that's already creates some kind of guilt and shame because you're not a boy you're a girl so so it's kind of like built in already and i'm not talking about newer generations because things have changed but i'm talking about a lot of people over age 40 and older, and you know the upbringing and the total idea of the society of how they look at girls or women. So, but back in what we were talking about, you're waking up, you're, you're becoming self-aware, you're working on yourself, and you have passed this stage of pointing finger at other people, which is already pretty much an advanced, relatively an advanced place. Now you're working on yourself. Now, while you're working on yourself, you also can get caught into another trap of which I meet a lot of people that they're, they're we're going through this process of doing psychotherapy and taking all these, whether working with a, a psychiatrist or a therapist or doing a lot of workshops that you're working on yourself 